contrapositive. Contrapositive of the conditional statement is just an alternative way to express it. There is no logical difference between a conditional statement and its contrapositive. It's just different way to express something that means the same thing. Okay. In a conditional statement, when the necessary condition is denied, the sufficient condition is denied as well. We've already understood that if we don't have necessary condition, sufficient cannot happen. That's basically what contrapositive does or express. That if you take away the necessary condition, you're, you're not going to have sufficient condition. And contrapositive helps us say that thing in, in a visual way. Okay. What we do in contrapositive is we flip the whole conditional statement and we negate both sides. Okay. And when we do that, it actually means that if you take away necessary condition, the sufficient will not happen. Let's say our conditional statement says, if A, then B, okay? If you have A, then you have B, right? Contrapositive this would be, if we don't have B, you know, we flip the whole thing. If we don't have B, we don't have A. What we just did is we flipped the whole conditional statement and we negated both sides. That's pretty much the contrapositive. You flip the whole thing, cross both sides, and even now it looks, even though it might look very different from the original statement, logically it means the same thing. It's just saying, if we don't have B, we don't have A. And that's true, right? Because B was the necessary condition of the original conditional statement. And we know that if we don't have necessary, we cannot have sufficient. So contrapositive is just saying that. Um, something we already know, and it's pretty simple. Now, it gets a bit complicated, challenging if we have words and a word or in the sufficient condition side, okay? Or even necessary. Because when we have word and and or, and if we take their contrapositive, they change, okay? So what happens if we have word and when we take contra in a conditional statement and when we take that conditional statement's contrapositive, that and goes to the other side of the arrow and turns into an or. If it's on sufficient side, goes to the um, necessary condition side, turns into or. And if it was or, then it will go to the other side and turn into an end. Okay. Let's walk through two examples to really um, understand this concept of end and or um, changing when they are changing the side. Okay. Let's say we have a conditional statement that says, if A and B, then C. Okay. A and B conditional statement, a sufficient condition, we have an error, and then C, okay? Contrapositive of this would be you know, flipping the whole thing, negating things, it would be, if we don't have C, then we don't have A, or we don't have B, okay? What that means is, you know, uh, what I'm trying to show is our and turned to or when it went to the other side. It stays between A and B, it stays between them, uh, but it turns into or. And we are doing the same thing as we did before, um, negating the terms, okay? Now, let's look at an example where our OR turns into AND, okay? This our condition statement is, if A or B, then C, okay? Contrapositive of that would be, if we don't have C, then we don't have A and we don't have B, okay? So our OR turned into AND, as simple as that. Lastly, if we have any term in a conditional statement that is already negated and we take its contrapositive, it turns positive on the other side. Let's say we have a conditional statement that says, if you have A, then you don't have B, okay? Contrapositive of that would be, you know, we flip and negate, it will look like this. If we have B, then we don't have A. Because B was already negated, when we took its contrapositive, it comes from the other side and becomes positive. And it's just like math, minus minus turns into plus. Okay. Sometimes conditional statements commit flaws. We call them conditional flaws. Let's go through them in next video.